Hey everyone, John here from Bite Size Cruises. Welcome back to our channel. If it's your first time here, we are a small travel agency that specializes in group and normal cruise travel. Uh, so last week, as some of you may know, we were on the uh, wonderful Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas. We're gonna have a full ship tour video. We're gonna have a full review video that comes out uh, later in the week. And if you followed along, we did some daily vlogs of everything that we did on the ship. So today I'm gonna to do a quick dining review of all of the things that we ate on uh, Oasis of the Seas. Also later this week or early next week, we're gonna do a restaurant by restaurant review and comparison of Royal versus NCL as how they match up with the specialty dining and main dining options. We'll do that later this week. That should be a fun one. Uh, right now we're gonna start out with the complimentary dining options. We'll start with the main dining room. We only ate in the main dining room once. We tried to eat everything on this cruise ship. So uh, we went to the main dining room. As we go through this, you'll see some videos and some pictures of everything that we ate. Uh, there was a bunch of us on this cruise. So you'll see a lot of different videos. In the main dining room, we had breakfast. It was very, very normally good, right? No issues, nothing was bad, nothing was you know outstanding. It was just, we had, uh, we had a really good breakfast. I had Eggs Benedict there. Everybody had pancakes and eggs and some different things, and it was it was really good. No complaints uh, as per normal in the main dining room. Everything's usually just fine. Uh, Windjammer, which is the buffet on Royal Caribbean's uh, Oasis of the Seas. I do I did hear a lot of people complain during the cruise about Windjammer. It was very crowded, and there were times where they only had one half of it open. So I can see where that was an issue, but I rarely go into the buffet, um, usually for snacks. So we did eat a bunch of snacks there, which were good. We did eat breakfast there one day, uh, which was also, you know, it's eggs and bacon and, you know, it's good. Everything was fine there. Um, a lot of people were complaining about the food. A lot of people were complaining about the lines and the normal things you hear about with the buffet, people cutting in front of lines, people taking too many, too much food and, being rude to staff and things like that, but I didn't experience anything that, everything was great for us. Solarium Bistro, some lighter options for breakfast and lunch there. Uh, I had a quick lunch snack there. I had some soup and some bread. It was great, no complaints. It's usually really good there. It's also quiet. Um, I did see some complaints that people were bringing kids into the Solarium Bistro. Kids are allowed in the Solarium Bistro. Kids are not allowed in the solarium, but they are allowed in the solarium bistro. So um, unfortunately, if you're looking for that much peace and quiet, you're gonna have to get room service. So uh, Coastal Kitchen, we did have a suite. So uh, we were able to try Coastal Kitchen. It's probably the best food I had on the whole ship. I had lunch there. I had um, a seafood, like a seafood uh, bisque almost with a bunch of seafood in there uh it was called a seafood volute i think it was very very good i had shrimp risotto for lunch as well and i had a um a really nice dessert i forget what i have for dessert but the food in coastal kitchen is great uh if you get the chance and you're in a suite uh really go to coastal kitchen there was only we only have one suite in our group so generally when that happens we don't really take advantage of all the suite benefits other than using the room we use the room for work as you all saw so Coastal Kitchen, definitely the best meal I had on the ship. It was amazing. Uh, and it overlooks the uh, pool deck, which is really nice as well. So Park Cafe, which is the small grab and go restaurant in the Central Park. It was great. I had a um, like an eggs egg breakfast sandwich there. It was really good. Uh, more members from our team had food there. Uh, really good. They had a little bagel line where you can go down the line and get different kinds of cream cheese and lox and different things. It was great. The Vitality Cafe, which is in the gym spa area. Uh, I did not have anything there, but our team had smoothies and some uh, drinks from there, and those were great as well. Uh, Cafe Promenade, I was there every morning. I, I wake up really early, so I wound up going down there for coffee and some snacks. Uh, I didn't eat any real food there, so I didn't have any, they have like wraps and some different things there. I only had like little snacks and pastries and they were really good. I did witness some people being really rude to the staff there. Uh, really funny story, I heard a guy and he said, hey, do you have Apple turnovers? This was on Monday or maybe, yeah, it was on Monday. So the staff said, no, we might have them later in the week. Uh, we just don't have them today. 
And the guy literally said to the staff, well, you have all the ingredients on board. Why can't you just make them? And he said, people this day, these days don't know how to work, which is awesome, considering how hard the people work on the cruise ship. Um, some people are just never happy. What can you do? Uh, so Cafe Promenade food was great. Uh, it's a great spot in the morning to go grab a cup of coffee and just sit and people watch a little bit. Sorrento's was really crowded the whole trip. We did get a chance to go get some pizza, but uh, it was late at night one night, and otherwise it was really crowded in there. But we did a pepperoni and uh, cheese pizza, and they were both good. Uh, my People always ask about Sorrento's, and I've heard that Alfredo's on uh, Princess is really good pizza. Sorrento's is fine. It's just, it's not great pizza. It's not anything you would write home about, but it's, uh, it's just good pizza. It's good snack food if you're, you know, if it's late at night or you just need a quick bite to eat, it's perfectly good. Uh, doghouse we ate there the first night. I had a bratwurst with sauerkraut. It was great. Loved it. And then El Loco Fresh, which is the grab-and-go Mexican on the restaurant. We ate there for lunch one day. Uh, it was good. Really good. Had chips. Had some tacos. Very, very good. Uh, loved it. You'll see some pictures from there and some video. And then uh, room service. We ate room service almost every day. When you're in a suite, Room service is complimentary, so we did breakfast uh, pretty much every day, and we got some snacks late at night from room service. Really good, no issues, everything came up hot. Uh, we got what we ordered pretty much every time. You know, there's always a little confusion sometimes when you're feeding 6,000 people, but it was really good. Um, better than on Anthem. So I had room service on Anthem and it was kind of spotty, but uh, the room service for breakfast was great on Oasis. Uh, no complaints at all, it was really good. And before we get into the specialty restaurants, I'd like to ask you to please like and subscribe to the video. Uh, we're going to try to bring out content almost every day uh, on all the trips that we're going on. We have people going on different ships. We're going to try to do sh ship tours and reviews. Our video will hopefully get better as we go through this. We're, you know, we're new at doing video and, and producing content. So hopefully as we get through this, uh, those things will get really better. Also, later this week, we're going to do a video. I'm going to do a quick video of my... 10 favorite cruise tubers or travel channels on YouTube who we watch the most, who are uh, the most influential and the best ones to follow. We'll go through that. Uh, so let's get into specialty dining. First one, day one we ate at Hibachi. So it's kind of our tradition when we go on a cruise that our team eats at Hibachi the first night as long as they have one on the ship. It was really good, it never disappoints. It's always a fun way to start your cruise. It's, you know, it's interactive, you're singing. Uh, it's just a great way to kick off vacation. And it doesn't disappoint. It's really good, the food's great. Um, the rice, however, is better on Norwegian. I think it's just more butter and more soy sauce. Uh, but we'll get into that later in the week or next week when we do our comparison. But uh, the rice was a little bit better on NCL. Day two, we did 150 Central Park, which we are gonna do a comparison between that and La Bistro on NCL later in the week. Uh, 150 Central Park was great. I We tried to eat different things every time we went there. First night I had Lamb Wellington when we went there. The second time I went back, I had venison there. Both meals were amazing. Uh, I really liked that restaurant. It's really good. Uh, the service was great. The people were there are great. They had a really nice drink. So all the restaurants, especially restaurants, have like a drink pairing that goes uh, with the theme of the restaurant. So they had some really good drinks there as well. Uh, it was great. We did not do, so we did not do on this one, Taste of Royal or Chef's Table. We had a lot of people and we couldn't get everybody to agree on a time or uh, the cost of that because Chef's Table is like a hundred bucks a person, uh, which is probably worth it because they give you wine as well, but we did not do that just so you're aware. The next night we did Chops. Uh, again, we did Chops twice. It was one of the restaurants we did twice. And uh, I had steak there the first time we went, I had a ribeye. Second time we went back, I had a petite filet. Both were amazing. Obviously, we'll, we will be comparing that to Cagney's on NCL. It was great. The wait staff brought us out all the sides since there was five of us. They brought out all the sides for us to try. Desserts were really good. They have uh, specialty coffees there afterwards that have uh, like boozy coffees that were really good. So uh, just so you're aware, that was a really good one as well. The next night we ate at Giovanni's Table, which is the Italian restaurant, which we will be comparing to 
La Cucina on uh, NCL. Giovanni's table was great. It was really, really, really great. It was, uh, we had all had fresh pasta and some, you know, we had a charcuterie board, we had some octopus. Um, so we'll go through that comparison. Comparing it to other royal ships, I thought it was like a little tiny, tiny step below Jamie's Italian, uh, which I know probably is going away soon, but it, it was really good. The pasta was really good. Uh, couldn't have been happier there with that. We then did Izumi on the day we went to Perfect Day. We just did sushi and uh, not much to say there. You'll see some of the rolls that we had, but the sushi was really good. Really, really, really good. No problem at all. The next day, during the day, we went to Johnny Rockets. We had lunch at Johnny Rockets. And it was just okay. I've had, I haven't had Johnny Rockets in a long time. So maybe it used to be better and it kind of has dropped off a little bit. Again, we had the ultimate dining package. So we went there, it didn't cost us anything. Uh, we got that, some people had shakes. The shakes looked amazing. I did not have a milkshake. Uh, I had a burger. I had the smokehouse burger. It was fine. Um, wasn't the best burger I've ever had, but it was fine. Another restaurant we did not eat at was Playmakers. So we did kind of wander in and out of Playmakers, but we did not eat there. So I'm not gonna uh, talk about their food all that much. The next one that we did eat at was Portside Barbecue. It was great. For being on a cruise ship and getting barbecue, it was really, really good. You'll see some of the things we had here. I had smoked turkey and some brisket, and it was excellent. I had cornbread. Uh, everything was great. Really great there. Our team, uh, a few people on our team said that was their favorite place. My favorite place was uh, 150 Central Park, and then after that, probably Giovanni's and Chops. A few people said Giovanni's as their favorite place, so interesting, really good food. The last place we did eat at uh, was Vintages. They We bought a bottle of wine and they brought us out some cheeses, which were excellent. We did not eat at Starbucks, which doesn't count anyway because it's Starbucks. Um, you know, you can get your normal snacks there. Other than that, that is all the food places that we ate at on the ship. Again, my favorite was 150 Central Park. I loved it there, I thought the food was great, the drinks were great. Um, you'll see all the videos and pictures here. If you have any questions about any of the restaurants, uh, reach out, let us know. In the comments below, put in uh, what was your favorite restaurant on Oasis. Um, again, Oasis doesn't have Wonderland, so we couldn't talk about that. But later this week, we'll do the NCL versus uh, Royal Food Tour. We will do the full ship tour, the room tours, and I will do my top 10 cruise tubers or travel tubers to follow. And other than that, we'll see you guys soon. Again, thanks so much for checking out our channel. We really appreciate it. Coming to you here live today from the Expedia Cruises uh, corporate office here in New Jersey as we just got off the ship the other day. So our next cruise is going to be Adventure. We have uh, two different itineraries of Adventure of the Seas um, in July. And then we have uh, Allure lined up for late August uh, to do the ABCs. If anybody would like to join us for that, come join us. That's going to be a great one. We also have in late July, uh, some of our team is going on Virgin. Uh, they're doing a four day to the Bahamas and the Bimini Island down there. And then we have a couple more in the future planned out. So we'll see you next time. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thanks so much.